So you say you're finding it difficult to actually do music with all of this going on when it comes to no it's not difficult it's, it's a different thing it's making a choice to recognize that promoting and business is just as important as the creation side of it so it's not difficult to create but you have to balance it with knowing well there's a whole business to it well okay then how do you create how do you write the songs and record I mean there's time set aside for recording but when do you get time to write is it during the recording process <coughs> um, is that how you guys work uh, the band the puppies or me yeah, and Russ the band because all three albums were done with the same producing team. Yes. Yeah. Um, but it's really as simple as, hey, you guys got to deliver a record in nine months, go right. And, and it's a very good um, situation for a while because you're basically writing all day, every day. But on the last record especially, it was um, just go and write songs until we think you have a full record worth of uh, quality content. And they wanted the same type of record that the previous one had been, and we had moved on to wanting to do slightly different things. Just not, not radical things, but slightly different things. So I just want to talk about the dynamics there for, of the process of writing, fulfilling the commitments with the record company, what the record company wants of you, um, working with other people, because you work with other songwriters, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Th those collaborations. So that whole process, the way the business works... The way the there. business works in that process is... is um, <clears throat> There's a lot of people that don't like it. A lot of people don't like it because it's um, it's becoming sort of cookie cutter in terms of the way the major labels are doing it. And, uh, and this is what they did with the, the, the puppies. We can write songs by ourselves and we're fine, but they want to cover all their bases, which is fine, right? All these things are technically fine. But in terms of the creativity of the situation, what they do is, they say there's this great songwriter down in Nashville who did the last such and such record that was number one all over the blah, blah, blah. And it's the numbers game. So go and spend three days with that guy and see what comes out of it. So you go down there and you work with this guy who's very nice, but you never met him and you don't really have a good connection and everyone knows it, but you have to fulfill your commitment, right? So you go down there and you write three songs in three days and he finishes and produces them up and they're not very good. Not because anyone's bad, but because the connection wasn't there. So they do this time and time and time and time again and we went and met all these songwriters and for me, I loved it because I learned all these tricks. I learned all the songwriting tricks, I became a much better songwriter by learning all this stuff. But in terms of creating an album's worth of material, like you, imagine if they said that to Led Zeppelin. You know, they wouldn't, you wouldn't have Led Zeppelin, right? The development process for a band now is not the way that it was before. The development process for a band used to be, we're going to support you for three albums, six years of, of your whole lives to develop your, because we believe in what you're doing and we see the potential. And if it doesn't work, we're going to do it with another few bands. And there's enough r money in the recording business and, and the selling of records that if and when you blow up, we're going to make the money back and we're happy with the decisions we're making. And if you don't blow up, there's going to be another band on the label that will, and that'll cover the, the losses. Yeah. Now that money is gone. There's no more record sales. So they don't want to, they don't want to give you anything. They, it's the opposite end of the spectrum, which is why thinking in a business minded way from the beginning is the only way to do it because the labels aren't looking at your songs. They're looking at your brand, right? They're looking at how many Facebook likes have you got? How many YouTube spins have you got? How many fans have you got on such and such? What are the numbers? It's a numbers game. So once you show them like if sick, that's why they came to us and said, uh, the sick puppies at the beginning, you're great, but you're missing something. Well, what we were missing was half the fucking legwork, right? Because the free hugs clip did all the legwork. After that, they got to come in and sign us and just capitalize on all of that traction that we had already created. For they didn't free. have to invest in the development. Didn't have to invest in any development. They weren't interested in doing that. And they're really not interested in doing it now. So that's the thing where like you can, you can be a great song. I mean, fuck, you can be a great songwriter and have all these great things. But they literally will say to you, go away for a year and get your numbers up, man. You know, like, like it's like talking to a professional athlete. Like, you're good. Go and train for a year and get, you know, we need more home runs per capita and we need you to cover the bases faster. And it's like, come on, get, you know, like, do your job. It's not about writing music. It doesn't matter if your music's even any good. If you've got a pretty face, you've got a thousand million Facebook likes. And everyone wants to see your face singing that thing or doing that thing or whatever the fuck So it is. how does this, being the business... Trying to make money, and if you're with, and you're one of the few bands that was with a record company, because most bands don't do this anymore. No, get that don't. kind of a deal. 
No, not anymore. No, they no. don't exist. So, what's anymore. the business turned into, and how do you, how does everyone make money out of this anymore? Because no one is buying CDs. <coughs> iTunes uh, doesn't amount to much. Yeah, the only deals that a major label is offering now are called 360 deals because they encompass everything. So, what's that? That is that is a deal where they're. That's why the the idea of branding is so important because they're buying, they're signing your brand. They're not signing your band. They're signing the brand, and the brand is the Facebook likes, what your hair looks like, how how good do you look when you sing? Can we put you in a Pepsi commercial? Do you will you, do you do you uh, are you Facebook friends with debutantes? Whatever the hell your situation is. But it means they're not just is. dealing with the album. No, they're, they're not they interested in everything. the music. They're not interested in the music. They're 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 interested in the music maybe at the beginning, but the most important, if the music's phenomenal and you don't have a great brand. They're not really interested in even developing the brand. They're like, no, we need to, because we've got another act over here that's already got a ready-made thing to go. They've got the album finished. They produce it themselves and invested their entire life savings. They've done all the work. They've toured. They've got, you know, ten thousand people that have signed their email list, and all the numbers are there. So they look at the brand and they say, now we're, we're going to sign the brand and we own the brand, which means that when we put the name of the brand on a record, we own that and get the cut, and we'll pay you later, maybe. Uh, when we put your name on a t-shirt, we own it, we get the cut, we'll pay you later, maybe. We'll cut a deal where any, it's literally anywhere between 20 to the label and 80 to the artist, or 80 to the label and 20 to the artist, depending on how much they fuck you. Um, and depending on how much your brand is worth, which gives you the leverage to negotiate at the beginning. <clears throat> Most bands nowadays, I remember when I was 22, I just wanted to be a rock star. I was so desperate to be, I was like, you don't know how great I am, wait till you see, I'm going to be great, it's going to be huge. I would have done anything to be a rock, they come to you and say, we'll make you a rock star, just sign this paper, and you sign it, because you want it, they, you don't think about it, you honestly go, well, if this doesn't work out, I'll just do it again later with a different set of people, and that doesn't happen, because they are, the chances of lightning striking twice are pretty slim, and by then, you're probably too old People have already given you your shot and they're not interested in giving you a second shot. So, what they, sorry, I'm sidetracking, but what they want to do is they want to sign your brand and then own the brand and then literally what you become is a paid employee of the record label as, uh, I don't know, if you, you, pretty much a paid employee. Like, like technically, you're, you're you, a should joint, you should that be they a joint. Can you should be a joint owner and there should be some sort of a, a joint venture concept. But really, it's... You know, like like with a record label, if you signed for an album deal back in the day, you couldn't then go and make a record for someone else. If you appeared as a guest vocalist on someone else's record, you had to get permission from the label and every j dollar that was generated from your input that went to you went to them because it was a recorded piece of music that they had signed your rights to and they'd invested all the money into selling these little fucking records and you owe them a lot of money. Because they invested your video clips mm. and your records. It's, it's, not, it's a loan, it's not it's, a it's gift. It's a loan. It's, it's the worst type of bank in the world. It's the smartest business model that's ever been created. It's like, we'll just, we, we get everything. You know, they have to pay, the, the artist covers the overheads of the touring. The artist, in the, old, in the old days, now they front the money for everything and they take an even huger chunk of it. But it's like, you know, the artist has to pay back all of the recording advance. The artist has to pay back the recording budget. The artist has to pay back every single dollar that the record label puts in. And then once that money is given back, right? Once the money comes back to the record label, they've already made $30 million off the 2 million album sales. Or like if it's one, if it was 1 million album sales at 30 bucks a piece, it's $30 million generated. They're not gonna give you much of that money because you have to cut, pay off your $2 million of debt first. And then when you, they do start to pay you, they're paying you literally, I think it's between 7 and 12% of each dollar. But we've known this, I mean, David Bowie, the Rolling Stones, the Beatles even have been through this mill. Mm. You know, but that's the, why they start their own record labels. Yeah, that's what usually happens. But back in those days, there would be, number one, records actually sold. So when records sold, if you blew up and you sold that many records, you can make a lot of money off record sales. The record label would make 10 times more. But you would still make a living off it. Now, there isn't really. The only way that a record label can, can make money is by owning everything that you do. This is going back to the point that I was making, which is that if the record label owns the rights to everything that you do as a musical recording artist, anything you do, they have the right to say yes, no, and we're collecting. Now, it's anything that your name is on the merchandise, your face is on the t-shirt, uh, your web stuff, your Vivo views, the advertising revenue generated. It's literally come down to the fact that when there was an artist that was signed who was a woman, the 360 deal was so all-encompassing that they said, in theory, the lawyer said, in theory, if she has a baby and sells the photos of the baby to New Idea, do you get that money? They said, yes. 
because they own her fucking name.